Masters podcast segment three. Uh, Jason Yacovino along with Phil Yacovino here on KRFORadio.com. We're watching uh, the leader, Patrick Reed, play the par four or par three fourth hole, and he comes up a little bit short of the green there as about a 20 footer, 25 footer for a birdie. And uh, Rory McIlroy, who is three shots back at this point after three holes, is going to hit his tee shot on number four. Staring it down, kind of talking to it. And uh, that one is going to be right on the stick. In what fact, that one is going to be two and That's a half, a three in. feet for birdie for McElroy. He'll get within two if he knocks that in, assuming Reed misses his. Uh, Phil telling us in his last segment he thinks that Reed's got the best chance to win, but certainly uh, some guys chasing him there. Um, and, and now as they show Fred Couples, uh, to, I guess a good chance to bring up this point, which is uh, what what about the guys 50 and over the those who are in there just as past champions, um, you know, what have you seen there? Couples, I mean, he's played well, and he's had that back problem the whole He's week. had, Couples has had about a, what, is he 60 yet? He's 57, maybe 58, whatever. Not it, sure. Ever since he's had his uh, exemption post-50, um, because he's a past champion, you can play until you're dead, basically. He's always contended. There's been some, even Friday afternoon, where he's flirted with the leaderboard, you know, up up at the top. Here's my take on these guys. And it's, he played with Bernhard Langer today, and they both shot even so par. So what do we do with that bet? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's, I a, it's a push, it's just, no. obviously. Yeah. Uh, so they both finished their three it's over one of for our the championships. Masters bets. You take a past champion over 50 and whoever does the best. And those seem to be about, the two, but forgot about Singh. VJ. Yeah. Uh, but here's my take on those guys. It's like VJ and and Bernhard, who I think is the oldest of the group that actually still kind of stick around and make the cut, um, and and Freddie, they they make the cut. I know there's only 87 guys in the field, but can still. you just stop playing when you're making the cut? No. Yeah, I, I think it's fun. I think it's awesome. I think it's one of the great things about this tournament: the fact that it is a limited field. You don't have you know, on Thursday and Friday, people teeing off on number 10. You know, everybody right, plays right. 1 through 18. You're going in threesomes. It's, it's a, you know, you're not teeing off at 6 in the morning either. I mean, you know, you have plenty of day to, to get it in. And, you know, like you said, you've got this group of players who ordinarily are not on the PGA Tour who are in this tournament especially. Uh, yeah, and they're able to make the cut, and that's well. I mean, that's and then Mark O'Meara, this awesome. was he, he announced that this was his last year. I didn't see if he made the cut or not. I don't. I, do I don't you think, think that? Did. I mean, well, obviously they wouldn't tell us because they don't discuss anything about this tournament. But do you think there's any pressure from memberships, uh, from the membership at Augusta for guys like Mark O'Meara and and you know, um, I think uh, shouldn't be. Uh, Tom Watson doesn't play this event anymore. I don't. Why not? Know. To but to be like, hey, you know. I mean, he won the par three contest on. Well, Wednesday. yeah, but Watson <laughs> doesn't play it. But but yeah. to to tell to put pressure on these guys to be like all right you know i think you've had your run no i i'm i'm all for it i mean if you can get around and find a way to shoot you know two over or something like that there's no you know i mean the guy who shouldn't be asked back i mean you had two amateurs that shot about 30 over uh you know i mean obviously they, yeah. they take pride in giving amateur exemptions that's kind of what the club was built upon is, certain is amateur the tournaments promotion of amateur golf that's right but, I mean, I don't uh, – to me, if you're a past champion and you can shoot a 75 or less, I want to see it. I mean, and what I don't want to see is what – what it, potentially what we could be seeing today, which is the winner of this tournament being 17, 18 under par. I mean, that – you know, the circumstances no, and Augusta have dictated doesn't want to that. See the, they no, don't want to see that either. The scores have been too low. Yeah. They've just been too low with this. Well, week you know, whatever, I mean, and, I'm guessing the number is going to be somewhere around 15 or 16 today maybe. Yeah, um, that's way that's, too low. If that's it then it's going to be Reed. But, um, yeah, I don't – I like the past champion, uh, you know, get these guys to hang around, make the cut. Like I said, Freddie would flirt with the lead every now and then. But I have no interest in watching Sandy Lyle shoot 85. And right. I don't even know if he plays anymore. Uh, yeah, he did. He okay. played this year. And I don't I don't know what he – he didn't make the cut. But um, so why is Ricky Fowler not winning majors? I think it's the medal. I don't think he has it inside of him to I, and mental. And, well, whatever, what whatever. Did you say metal. Yeah, I don't know. Does that work there? Well, if, if it doesn't work, we'll cut it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, What's metal? I think it's like just your insides. Okay. You know. All right. But I could be wrong. Anyway, the insides, the killer instinct. Uh, it doesn't really apply to golf, maybe. But I think I, I think uh, he doesn't have it. Um, 
like I said, he he's very happy to be on TV, very very happy to be around and hanging with the guys and say, "Wow, Ricky can really play." And and you know, but sure. I don't think he wants to go out there and grab one. And I'm probably, you know, this is unfair for me to say because I don't know Ricky from Adam, but I, but when you watch him play, he just doesn't have that. Like you can just tell looking at Patrick Reed when he plays and, and how he reacts and and grinds and fights. I would say a guy like Patrick Reed is doing more with less. And who Ricky is far more talented than Patrick Reed. And look what Patrick Reed and a does. Pretty big four and a half footer there for Reed for par on number four when he knows that uh, McElroy's got to kick in for birdie to get within two. So And here's another example of speak of the devil. So a couple years ago, Ricky finished top five now in all Ricky. majors. Um, and then he won the he won the players championship. So he's nine under as we're speaking now. He's got a second shot here into number five. I mean, he's right in the group ahead of the leaders. Correct. But oh the, my goodness, he airmailed that, and that's a bogey for sure. But the week before the players, he was voted the most overrated player on tour by a player's survey, which I don't think is fair. With I've been saying that for ten years. Correct. <laughs> and you know what his response was? Well, it was top five in all the majors. Well, no, and last and, year. and what is but that, back, Ricky? Uh, my point is that's a guy that's very content hanging around the top, but not actually I, wanting to win. When I was saying he was under overrated his first few years when he was on, you know, he's on TV all the time and he wasn't winning anything. Now, since then, he's legit. I mean, he, he hasn't won too many times, as you point out. He's won like four PGA Tour events. But he's in the mix. I mean, as far as world golf rankings, if you care about that at all. I, I do. Mean, it matters. He's right up there. And it's just he's never been able to. And you can't say that a player's championship is a major. I don't care. It's not. You know, it's just it's not. They don't even but, like that course. Well, but anyway, it's a, you know, that, that's the next big one coming up. Um, so, uh, oh, I wanted to talk about Augusta National a little bit and, and this tournament and sort of how it's evolved. Yep. Uh, you know, one thing I think they've done tremendous um, work with making this more accessible for the public. Right. You know, you just get on your whatever device it is on the Internet. You don't have to worry about um you know, logging in, signing up, doing any kind of nonsense. You, have cable. You, just, yeah. you can get all these feeds, the featured groups. They have the right guys playing in the featured groups. You you saw Tiger, every shot of Tiger and Phil's this week uh, based on that. You know, the Amen Corner stuff. Um, back in the old days, you know, they, they had limited commercials, but they basically said, we're going to give you a little peek into Augusta National, but we're not giving you the whole thing. We're going to give you the last 10 holes yeah. on Saturday and Sunday. We'll give you late-night highlights on Thursday and Friday. I mean, this was, a, you know, as recently as the mid-'90s is how they did this. And then eventually they told it, you know, ESPN showed up and said, hey, you know, let's, how about some Thursday-Friday coverage here? So they finally, you know, gave into that, and then— Did Chris Berman ever call golf at Augusta? I don't know. I kind of doubt it, but— That would be bad. I, <laughs> That would be bad. I don't know. Because I think he did for the, the, the British or whatever. Was I'm going to be honest. I'm not even a big Scott Van Pelt fan. Oh, Van Pelt's good. Yeah, I'm just not. But it's just, he doesn't it's really just get to call whoever, many holes. The no, CBS it's, crew kind of. And they are. Mm. And Augusta National is like, look, we'll let you have it, ESPN. But Jim Nance is there. I mean, he yeah. is our guy. Uh, and Jim Nance, to full disclosure, is my favorite broadcaster on TV today. But um, – yeah, what a week he is to have, too. Yeah, huh? it's, National it's championship always pretty on good Monday. for him. Yeah. But, you know, so I, it is – it's so cliche, but it's so green, and it's so awesome, and it's so quiet, and it's just perfect. And I got – I'm a decent multitasker. I'm not going to say I got nothing done at work Thursday, Friday this week, but it, part I of what's – I didn't because I didn't go. Part of what's cool about this is you're – watching something in its entirety without commercials and it's just it's just right there for you and obviously it's not the same as actually being there but it feels pretty sweet they do a really good job with the coverage um and if you talk to anybody that's been there they're going to tell you that the tv doesn't do it any justice but i tell you what the coverage and the way that they're filming it from these angles especially on some of the um uh featured group coverage you sure. really can get a little bit more of appreciation for the slopes and for mm -hmm. the, just for the grounds itself, um, and it'll, and you know some of the 3D graphics that they do as well, kind of give you a little bit more of an insight as to what these players face. And I think it's cool. And shout out to Augusta for going the extra mile. Even now they have that chip drive, chip and putt for the kids. They just announced this year they're going to have a women's amateur championship with the last 18 holes being played on Saturday prior to the Masters week. So that's pretty cool. Yep. I mean, they're doing their part. Uh, now, 
you know, say what you will, the course, I mean, let's put it this way. It's a lot better than it than the reputation is getting better than what it used to be. It'll come full circle when they let Gary McCord back on the premises. <laughs> They're not. All right, Actually, well, have uh, you ever speaking of the Gary McCord thing? Have you ever gone on YouTube and and looked for his bikini wax? I've never heard it. I did. I looked the other day. I don't know how to find it. <laughs> we we got a break here. Well, we're going to pick up with that point. I I did, we're going to pick up with the the commentators at this event and why my favorite golf commentator Gary McCord is continues to be shut out of it so Masters Podcast Jason Iacovino Phil Iacovino uh, will stick with us here uh, segment four coming up